we're going first. So I decided to hit record. I just want to say, guys, you don't have to play meta. You don't have to play 40 card. You can play what you want. You can play your pet decks. Just kind of add a little bit of spice of meta. I got to do it. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> Um, of course, it really does depend on what rank you are. Right now, I'm just floating in, uh, what the hell is it? It's below diamond. I forgot what it's called. But, yeah, I'm not that high. So, it's relatively, I don't want to say it's easy. Anyways, we got first, so this is literally going to be so fucking free. First with Gravekeepers is insane. I love going first with Gravekeepers because you saw what I opened with. Alright, good. Now let's just pray they don't have an Imperm and we're good to go. They don't have an Imperm. I'll put this in attack mode, um, just because if they storm it, it doesn't matter. I'm kind of just baiting out that they do that. They don't have anything else. All they had was the ash. I'm so glad they used that too. Grab this. This prevents them from special summoning, period. Which means I don't get kaiju. It is literally such an important card. Let's see what they got to do. Man. The thing I like about casual is sometimes you play the same people. Uh, so it's almost like getting a 2 out of 3 in this game. A lot of fun. But at the same uh, time, sometimes you get stuck playing the exact same person over and over and over again. But what I really like about uh, Gravekeepers is their dark spellcaster so that is very flexible they can do a lot of shit um they can get away with a lot of uh non-engine as well um for this deck i chose to play 50 cards and i think i'm only running one hand trap and that's just for battle so it's really uh it's experimental right now I'm just trying to see which cards work best together, and I'm just going to see which cards, like, belong in the, uh... Well, it's never going to be finished. That's that's the fun of Yu-Gi-Oh. You go up the tiers, and you got to change your whole deck. That's just kind of the way it is. Like, you, you, you play differently uh, based off of who you're going against, obviously. Right now, it's casual, uh, so it's really hard to rate this because the decks are all over the place which is wonderful you know i love to see variety that's the main reason why i'm even bothering making this i want to get the message out there just play your pet decks and upgrade all the little parts and pieces so that way you can um be anti-meta like a lot of decks are really strong already did you negate my effect is that what you do or did you just half my attack Oh, okay. That sucks. Man, water is so strong. I could have played this in defense mode. I think this is a lesson for myself. Next time, just play it in defense unless I have my hand trap. Oh well. I have some follow-up for this, so it's not the end of the world. What are you waiting for, bro? I think we just have a bad connection. All right, pass it back, 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 pass it back. Come on, Dark Honest. I literally could have used you earlier. Whatever. All right, we're gonna set this bad boy. Hold on to the honest. 
uh, and just see what the hell goes out. Dark Honest is so fucking broken. So, it doesn't target. It doesn't do anything that they can't really stop. Unless, of course, they have um, Call by the Grave or Monster Negation. But, again, this is actually pretty good Monster Negation. Or, uh, Monster... It's pretty good bait for Monster Negation. My only question is, do I use it now or not? I don't think I'm going to use it. So, turn that off. They're going to attack. Oh! Fuck! Did I miss the timing for the flip? I think I did. I think I did. Oh, that's more embarrassing for me. Man. Oh, I didn't. Oh, this is awesome. All right, so we're in her. Spiritualist. You're gonna have to deal with me again, my partner. My dueling partner. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm sorry, man. Ooh, don't scoop on me, okay? <laughs> All right. Back you go. Oh, what's this? Anti spell fragrance? Yes! Return! And. Just yes. Absolutely yes. Oh my god, I love that card so much. Dude, Ultimate Slayer is so... Slept on, god damn! Alright, just in case they have anything they can activate in the battle phase, I'm putting this down right now. And... I'll activate it here. Alright, cool. There's nothing really... Oh, 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 let me get some extra damage. What am I doing? All right, let's go. Battle phase. I might be getting way too happy about this casual match, but I'm just really glad that I can do stuff. What is this? What do you have? Is that evenly? It is evenly. I'll just get rid of fucking Dark Honest. That was easy. Why'd you even try anything? Well, that's rude of me. They have to try something. Come on. <laughs> I'm sorry. But, like, this is just so free. I can't help but be a little cocky. Just a little bit. So, I'm not even explaining what I'm doing. This is basically just showing off, I guess. Uh, my whole goal is to make him because he protects my back and lets me search. Not my back row, actually. Literally just my field spell. He protects my field spell. He can't be destroyed. Uh by card effects and neither can this this prevents special summoning as long as I have a gravekeeper so they literally can't kaiju me they're probably mad about anti-spell fragrance because now they lock themselves out it just be like that brother let me let me not bullshit you and just head straight to battle I'm gonna do you that courtesy it, it's freaking casual, so. It's all about the respect. The respect! Alright, so let's uh, get into the deck. It's a little experimental, as you can tell from the title. 
50 cards, like I said before. You just want to see as many Gravekeeper's names as possible. And you really want to see your Spiritualist and hopefully something that can special summon itself. And or uh, get you your Necro Valley. Like, ideal hand, you start off with a Necro Valley, a Spiritualist, a Gravekeeper, um, possibly an Extender. And if you're cracked out lucky, you have Hidden Temples of Necro Valley ready to slam down. That is ideally. Also, if you're going first. So that's a lot to hope for. Most of the time, <laughs> you're getting a Spy. Pretty sick. Not gonna lie. Um, and you also get Commanded, like, a lot, which is fucking awesome. Obviously, you're running at 3. You're running your most... Uh, crucial cards at three. I say you get Spy is crucial because he can help you float or she, I don't know, uh, she. So she can help you float super easy. You set her down, or you set a guard down, whichever, because they're both flip and it's just beautiful because if your opponent knows any Grave Keepers, they're gonna just expect you to play Spy, but then they attack into it, expecting you to maybe special summon, you get a guard and just spins the card back. Um, so that's why these cards are so fun. Even though they're flip, you use your normal summon, and it's kind of a gamble because if they have removal, then you're kind of in a tough spot. But if they don't and they just attack, it, it's so rewarding. Especially with Spy, because Spy can go into Nobleman, can go into another Spy, can go into a headman, and when headman is special summon, you can go into another spy that gets put face down or a recruiter. Because usually at that point, they've attacked like five times, and they still have to get rid of some more of your monsters. So you might as well get a recruiter for their last attack to get you a monster to your hand. Ideally, you're commanded. If you don't have Necro Valley. If not, go for Spiritualist. And if you already have uh, a Supernaturalist on board, go ahead and grab your boss monster of the, of the main deck, Oracle. Um, and you can just sack him and get... You'll get strong as fuck. Like, this, this card is really fun. It reminds me a lot of the Egyptian God cards. Um, more like a combination of Raw and uh, Slifer. Because his effect to weaken all of my opponent's monsters um, by X and out. And then raw just because it's a beat stick. Actually, that's more a tone to Obelisk. So I guess it reminds me of Obelisk and Slifer. You can also use it, uh, summon it with one tribute, which is kind of nice if you just get stuck with it. But also, if you get Spiritualist and this, it, 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 it makes your... Supernatural is incredibly strong. So, uh, I would love to run one more game, but I think this video is going to be pretty long if I do. Um, so, I'll end it off, this this section of this video, um, basically going over the end of this. So, I already talked about how well they float the Spy, I talked about what you're most likely going to see with their opening hands. These are just some extenders I've been playing with, um, playing around with, it's experimental like I've been saying. Uh, you have your one warrior that you get with your Rota, sometimes you, <laughs> you open with this. It's not so bad though, because, like, if they see your Necro Valley or any of that, they're gonna just assume that it's Spy, once again. So you set that, uh, and you can get either Recruiter, you can get Nobleman, you can get Headman, depending on what's, what's in your grave. Uh, and if you have a Dark Honest in your hand, <laughs> you can basically clear out whatever they have. It's a lot of fun to play around with. Um, the Snake card, I actually haven't seen once in like the six games I've played. Um, can't really tell you how useful it is. Same thing with this. I have not seen either of the win cards that uh, search each other out once. It's really funny. Um, so I can't really tell you how effective they are. If anything, I might get rid of them um, to play probably two more evenly matched. Because evenly matched is just, dude, 
I'm not running too much removal in this deck. I could. Um, so I'm thinking either that, or it's going to be change of heart, or it's going to be uh, triple attack. Uh, I could even run talents because I, I, I actually run a lot of normal spell trap. I just noticed that. And this deck could really pop off with some of that. Especially if I'm put in a position where I'm going second, or they have any kind of monster on board, that's actually kind of tough. Yeah, I gotta think about that. That might be really fun to play around with. So anyways, for right now, uh, for the rest of the monsters, this is... I, I see this in my opening hand actually a lot, which is great, because uh, extenders are kind of fun. Um, it's not engine, so kind of sucks a little bit, but like you really do start with a ton of level 4s, so that's why I was happy to find pretty much an extender level 4, all of them, now that I'm looking at it, uh, very free. And that gets me uh, him pretty often, that's what I go for, because I can just boop, delete the field. Um, or Begu, so that way I can basically just be playing Swords of Revealing Light or uh, Mini Beat Stick, which is fun. Uh, I never go into this, obviously. It's just um, used for uh, Centigrade Effect from Ultimate Slayer. Um, same thing with the Cloud, obviously. Um, Zeus, I have not made yet, but I could have made him, um, but I didn't have mats. Um, with my Magoo, um, so I didn't make it, didn't seem smart. Haven't made Quintuple, uh, Quintet Magician yet. I have made Mysterious Dragon, pretty sick. Um, haven't used Intist for material from Ultimate Slayer or Guru yet. I haven't run into any Fusion players. It just hasn't happened yet, because I'm still in casual, so you just see all kinds of shit. It's mostly been Axes, Synchro, and Link. Not even that many Synchros now that I'm thinking back. At any rate, Dark Honest is a superstar for this deck. When you're specialing summon special summoning so much and you're overwhelming your opponent, because maybe you floated um, and it's just popping off and you have the right cards in your hand, this card is a great normal summon because you can just bring it right back to your hand at the end of the turn. It's a little tiny chip damage. If your opponent's still alive, uh, you get follow-up because if they make it to the battle phase, they remove all your shit. You get to uh, <laughs> get all of their attack down to zero if they manage to get anything worth swinging at you. Um, it's really good for surprise. Like I said, like if you get to the battle phase, this, this deck is really strong. It's really oppressive. Um, very good control. Uh, let's see. Chief is your monster reborn of the deck. Um, I, I'd say he's more like a Call of the Haunted because he's not as free as Monster Reborn. He requires one tribute, but it's so sick because you can target any of your Gravekeepers. I almost always go for Headman because Headman will just on, on special summon give me um, any of my Gravekeepers that are in the grave and just either face up attack or face down defense. So if I want to reset for my guard, my spy, uh, I can just do that. So that's pretty dope. Um, I mostly special summon her um, to go uh, into my Chaos Angel because I get a ton of level 4s. She's the only level 6 in the deck. Um, so that's basically her purpose. I never really use her for her uh, field spell protection because I almost always have my Supernaturalist. Like, he's so consistent. I pretty much see him every game. Even if I had to dig for him, the deck is pretty strong and just surviving. I've been thinking about adding perhaps the Swords of a Ridden Light, but I feel like it's way too slow. Um, but sometimes when they don't have removal, they're kind of just stuck. And if I can get them... Because this deck is super strong with control, obviously. So uh, that would be a really good combo now that I'm talking through it. This card, um, I haven't summoned once, but the idea is that I can get him uh, out of the hand with this pretty easy, or for just one tribute, which isn't bad at all. Uh, he gets buffed quite a bit if I get a ton of, like, you know, it's mid-game, late-game, end-game. 
um, or just a really good going second. Like, I've already summoned my Supernaturalist, so I probably have like three or four Gravekeepers in the grave, so. It gets boof boofed. <laughs> it gets boofed up pretty nicely. This is another piece of extender that can also be used as polymerization, which is kind of fun. Um, that's what I mostly used to go into this. Um, that's pretty much its whole purpose. Just beat stick, uh, fusion. Another supernaturalist, basically. Pretty okay. Nothing really to write home about. I can pretty much summon it every game. I think there's only one game I was holding on to it because I had uh, this in my hand and I didn't have a spellcaster. So that was it. The spellcaster in hand. I think I had one on field. Oh, I guess I didn't because I would have been able to special summon this. So no, I didn't. I think I probably drew into it and I had this in my hand. It doesn't matter. Um, I just didn't get to summon him that turn. So, or uh, that game, excuse me. Uh, Grave of Oracle, I, I got into him a little earlier. He's like a god card, basically, pseudo god card, you know. Uh, pretty dope. I hardly go into him. I really only do it to like flex, basically. Kind of fucked up. I don't really care that much. It's, it's casual, it's fun. You don't really flex, it's kind of rude. I have not nibbed anyone at all, uh, but I'm keeping it in the deck because once I come across a Snake Eyes player or a Horus player or anyone that I could have nibbed, I, I cry a little bit. I just play one because I don't like clogging. Uh, this deck can clog pretty easy. So you have stuff that can kind of crack. Obviously, Feather Duster, you gotta play it. Rota for this card, I kind of explained that earlier. Steel is pretty dope. Lets you get any of your two Gravekeeper monsters back to your hand. Um, I love opening Steel and like two Commandants because you get that and you get all the Necro Valleys from your deck, which is like the Thunder Dragon thing, you know? You get them out of your deck, boom. You just have pure gas to draw. Um, I fucking love this card. I almost want to put it at two. Um, because it's not a once per turn. I'm just not sure I'm going to always open a dark spellcaster. Although that's the majority. But unfortunately because of the extenders, it does kind of fuck it up a little bit. So I'm think like I said, if I get rid of these two, I, I have a lot more options. But. I don't know yet. I want to play a couple more rounds with them. If anything, oh my god, I literally said I'm not getting rid of Nib because, you know, I can really use him, but I might have all that. Because, like, the other thing that kind of uh, locks you in with this deck is the Hidden Temples of Necrorelli. You really want to see this, but it cuts you off, too. You cannot special summon anything else but Gravekeeper. So you want to have all every important piece of your board on your board before you activate this. It is so high-risk, high-reward, because like, it, 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 you, it puts you in the same control as your opponent. <sighs> Alright, so this card's awesome, but also, once again, um, if Necro Valley is in play, you can't get it from your Graveyard. So, mm -hmm. I got into one of those situations uh, where I had Necro Valley active and I had this in my hand. So what I did, because I had a second a copy of Necro Valley like, in my hand, I activated, I set Necro Valley, so it popped the previous field spell, set this, and then I activated Dark Magic Veil vale to special summon my Oracle. It was just to get a slightly stronger card on board. I still ended up losing that game, but I just wanted to beat my opponent down as much as I could. So, uh, special summon him, and then I activate the Necro Valley, boom, gets an extra 500 attack, and cuts my opponent right back off from the grave. Can't banish anything either, so GG's. Anything from their grave. You, you literally can't move anything from the grave. Here. Um, Necro Valley Throne, amazing. There's so much search in this deck, and so much special summon from this deck that it's like, 
it has so much potential, man. Like, if you get the right start, you're so good. Um, speaking of, you don't always need the search. You can literally normal summon again, which is sick as hell. Like, just think about it. Two bodies, right there. Easy. And if you have the right hand, that could be more bodies. Um, this is nice. It's a change of heart that permanently gets you the monster. And it doesn't target. So it's, it's, it's amazing. Like, they don't see it coming. The only hard requirement for it is having to have two uh, spellcaster monsters on the field. Uh, so that's not the worst. Also, they have to have an attack position monster. So, up in the air. That's why I only have one of it. Um, it can be really good at two, which is <laughs> why I crafted two. So, uh, in a perfect world, I'd be playing two of these and two of these, but I don't think I'll see them, my, you know, dark spellcasters all the time. Well, this one's just spellcasters, so this actually could go to two pretty easily. I play this at two and maybe this at one. Yeah. So, uh, this is the best deck in the fucking card in the meta right now for me. It's really slept on. I don't know if I've already said that a lot in this video, but send Entus to the grave, bye bye fusion, bonus you. You literally get to pop a card. Um, Gurura, same thing. Um, bye bye their monster, hello, you get to draw a card. Um,. This card is also great. You get to spin a card, um, and spin a card. <laughs> um, this one's awesome. You get to spin and negate. Love that. And there was a Sky Striker monster where you send it to the grave, and it special summons itself to the opponent's field, and you get to special. You get control of that monster back at the end of the phase, and I think their monster as well, the one that was sent. Or the other one that they control in the field, I can't remember exactly, but pretty dope. Pretty dope card. I don't play it because uh, extra deck's kind of tight. I guess I can literally get rid of the Quintet Magician for that, but it's more just, you know, experimenting. It's just kind of fun. So if I if I get to have that anime moment where I, I draw six and all of them are monster cards that are spellcasters and I happen to have this dragon and I special summon it, would that be enough actually? Hold up. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be enough because I would have this card, I'd send one to the grave, and I'd be at four cards in my hand and this card on the field. And this needs five spellcasters. So... <laughs> I guess if I had thrown... Special that... Uh, get my headman to summon... Yeah, I'd have to go through a whole lot. But actually, that, that, uh, that'd that be the only way. So, I really don't need this card now that I'm saying this out loud. So I think I'll get rid of that for the Sky Striker. I'll do that for you guys right now so you can see it. Did I not spell that correctly? I don't think I did. Uh, excuse me. Oh, there's a space, so I just was not doing it the way it wanted to. This is the card I'm talking about. This card is sent to the graveyard. You can target one monster your opponent controls. Special summon this card to your opponent's field, but shift control to its owner during the end phase of this turn, and if you do, send that target monster to the graveyard. So that's what the other side is. You don't get it, but you do get control back of this card, um, and you get to send that card to the grave. So... It's kind of awesome in my opinion, because if you really can't get rid of that card, like you can't box over it or whatever, like, who cares, <laughs> you know, you can, you can literally send it to the graveyard, which doesn't target, excuse me, literally the first sentence, if this card is sent to the graveyard, or uh, the semicolon, I guess it is the first sentence, you can target one monster. So yeah, it does target 
I, I don't use this that much because most of the decks I do play um, have a super tight extra deck and needs every link monster it can get. So uh, I don't use this often, but it's a great card, especially uh, because of Ultimate Slayer. Um, let's see, Necro Rally, love this card. Obviously, you need this card to play a Gravekeeper deck. Gravekeeper deck, it's the thing that keeps it in business. It is literally such a crushing card for so many cards in the meta, and it's been like that since, like, the start of the game. Like, it just depends on what kind of format we're playing. Right now, a ton of cards that need to access the graveyard, banish things from the graveyard, add cards back from the hand, uh, back from the graveyard to the hand or to the deck. You can't do that with this. And that shuts down so many decks recursion that it just overwhelms them because they can't really, you know, once their strategy goes away, they kind of panic and start making mistakes. And that's why you can really chip away at them with this deck. If anything, you could really get rid of all these extenders, except for this probably, because this is pretty decent. Um, and just play hand traps, but um, I'm still experimenting with the best support for my dark spellcasters, um, and I want to try and fuck with spellbooks a little bit, but uh, I don't know yet. I'll probably watch some videos or something and see what other people are doing. Um, I haven't gone and used Magical Dimension once, so I could also cut this card, but the idea is just basically to surprise your opponent, um, or uh, you to disrupt them, or you could go into it um, during your battle phase and just kind of use that as um, a disruption, and also just to, uh, what is it called? Get like a plus one, because like, say you get Headman, special summon that, boom, banish their shit, um, get something from the grave, continue to attack for a little extra damage, and if you already have Necro Rally on the field, oh wait, never mind, this card actually can't... Okay, never mind, yeah, 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 yeah. it works with Necro Rally. I just haven't, um, like I said, I just haven't used it, so I scared myself a little bit to thinking that it wasn't really even any bit useful. At any rate, um, evenly matched. Oops. Rite of Spirit is okay. I haven't used it, but I've used it in, like, I haven't used it today, I should say, but I have used it when I play Gravekeeper, like other times I've used variants of the deck. Um, pretty okay. You can just keep it at one, honestly, because you can't search it, but it's nice to draw into or hold on to. Um, if you had triple attack, that's cool. Um, to search it, but there's better normals to get. Honestly, you can take this or leave it. I take it just because I like, you know, being able to get shit back and experimenting a little bit with all the tools I have in the toolbox. Um, that being said, that's basically, you know what Evenly Match does. Um, these last two cards though are pretty okay. Um, Actually, this last card is really good. I, I shouldn't downplay it. This one's okay, because you, you really have to have Necro Rally and a Gravekeeper Monster face up on the field. Um, but it is a solemn judgment for free. So that's why I just play one for right now, um, because you can search it off Supernaturalist. Pretty dope. Pretty dope. Necro Rally Temple is one of my other favorite parts of the deck because it is almost like Waking the Dragon, where Waking the Dragon has a destruction effect where you get to special summon from your deck or extra deck, any card you want. It's so sick. This has that property um, where they destroy it uh, and you get to activate Necro Rally. Um, you get to set Necro Rally from your deck. If this card in your possession is destroyed by an opponent's effects and sent to your graveyard, you can set one Necro Rally spell trap directly from your deck except Necro Rally Temple. So you can play, or you can set your Necro Rally, you can set in Temple, uh, Throne, Steel. Pretty good options. Um, if it is your turn, you are really, really lucky because you can activate it 
you know, you set it and activate it. Pretty awesome. Uh, oh, right, 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 right. So this is another <laughs> pretty good set off of that. If I do say so myself, if you already have Necro Valley and uh, one of them is the Free Negate off of their, you know, trying to one up you. Especially if you already have Supernaturalist and your Necro Valley. Because they're not going to be able to destroy either one of those. They would have destroyed your temple and just actually done you a favor. This is basically the Ruin of Freer Traps or Triple Attack or whatever you want to say. It helps you a lot. Um, Chaos Sorcerer, uh, like I said, you go into her. It, her? It? Why'd I call him her? This is definitely a he. Uh, I could be wrong. I don't really care. It, it, it's whatever. It's a demon. It's a fiend! At any rate, you do make this quite a bit because it's very free to summon the required, required materials that get you to it. Um, dope card. Uh, I think I've got it like four out of the six games I've played, and every time I just destroys the opponent. They don't know what the fuck. They're like, oh, okay, well, I guess the match is really over then. Um, this card, I think I already talked about it a little bit. Really awesome. Just nuke the board. Talked about that. Yeah, that, that's that's it. Oh, um, I haven't even summoned Crusadia Avermax, and I haven't summoned Unicorn, really. I go in SP all the time. All the time. Pretty much by the time I get to the point where I could go into these, um, it just isn't, isn't needed. Now that I'm thinking about it, I can't really effectively go into Avermax, so I'm going to get rid of it for Underworld, because I think that's a better trade, because that's basically my Kaiju. I don't play any Kaijus at the deck, because I, once again, I have um, this, it locks you out of so many cards, so you really got to fight. So uh, that's the deck. I want to go into one more game now that I've edited this, and I just want to see how we run through it. Uh, if I get a bad hand, or if I go second, this is going to be a real test, a real sweat. Oh, thank God, we might get carried again. <laughs> Let's see what the RNG is looking like, guys. Opening five. Let's see, let's see, let's see. That's the only problem with 50, I guess, is that draw. But realistically, I could run a um, Allure of Darkness. I would just get it so it's pretty much 99% dark. I like to use this just to get see if they have ash or anything. I'm deciding if I want to set and summon this or if I want to pop evenly. I think I want to set and summon this because I have the Dark Honest. So whatever I have, um, like, obviously they're going to kill that. It's it's only fucking 1200. Oh, I should have set right as Spirit! Damn it! Just in case, because if they have like a swarmed board, you know, and they do have enough to just keep killing through my stuff, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, depending on what they have, ooh, okay, this is actually going to be really, really good. So I'm going to go into uh, Gravekeepers, I forgot what the guy's name is, Let me let me see, let me look him up. Nobleman. I'm gonna go into Nobleman, have them destroy it, or I can pop it. I can pop their monster with the Dark Honest. I haven't decided yet. Let them destroy it, um, get a face down card, go into Spy, have them attack Spy. I can either use my Dark Honest then, and then just get a spirit Spiritualist to the board, a Shaman to the board, um, or a Recruiter. If I get a recruiter, um, if it dies, I would get the headman. If not, I would leave it, and then uh, 
special summon into SP Little Knight or something, and then get Recruiter's Effect, choose Search, and then I would get uh, probably my Commandant, so I get Necro Valley. That is like literally the best route to take. If I didn't do all of that, I would have just evenly matched right away. But, it is always good to have a contingency plan. So, let's see what we are faced with. What's going on? What's going on? Let's, uh, let's see. Well, now that I know I have Grave Keepers. Man, I really love seeing Kashira make their boards, man. See, this would be great if I hadn't did, but I don't. I just play one of them, Nefiti. Which is another reason why I'm like, I can I could probably move some things around. That's why I like casual, that's why I like experimental, it's kind of fun. Just, just turn your brain off, down a little bit, not off, just down a little bit. Oh, no. See, now this, this is trouble. You can just literally, oh, okay, great. Okay, never mind. <laughs> Wait, so you can just special summon that card? Like, literally for free? Oh, oh, because of Cash Tier of Birth. That's why. Alright, we're gonna actually put that plan into motion, bro. This is gonna be so fun! Effect? Wait, what? Why didn't his effect go off? Ayo! When this card he controls is destroyed by a uh, battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent to your graveyard. Uh, you can special summon one spell because a star monster with 1500 less attack from your deck in attack position. Dude, I have so many of those. In this card, you control is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster and sent you. Wait, was it not sent to the grave? That could be literally the whole thing. Oh, that's why. You're so smart. You've already had the answers. How did I not think about that when you had Fenrir right there? I just overlook it. Like, like I just I start looking at my shit whenever I go against an opponent who just spent so long setting up their board. And to be fair, that was a pretty quick cash to return. It took like two or three minutes. Not that long at all. Sometimes it can go for like six minutes, and then you just like, let me play a side game. So unfortunately, okay. Here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. I will activate Necrovelli. He's probably going to target Banish it. And then I'll just play Dark Honest and Rite of Spirit. I don't even have a Grave Keeper in the grave! Useless! Activate. Oh, you let it go? Set. Mm. I'll just hold on to Rise Spirit. I really don't need to set it. It's probably gonna get... <gasps> no, I should have set it! Because then it's another card that he's gonna try and possibly target and get away because he doesn't know what it is. See? That was like my first mistake, misplay, like, all day. That's tough. 
I saw a bruise on my fist, so I was like, what the fuck is that? But it's just from uh, playing on your desk for a lot of hours. It happens, no biggity, but I'm not doing anything crazy. It's literally just from resting on here. Man, I wish they would hurry up. I feel like I've been talking forever. Man, I had to go against Cash Jiro. One last match to humble me in front of you guys, I guess. Show you its uh, limitations. Honestly, it's still a really solid deck. It can use a ton of tweaking, but that's what I'm here for. I'm here to experiment. Uh, and just pick apart the deck as best as I can, as best as I can highlight its uh, good features and just, you know, build the best deck I can. Oh, man. Can you go? I'm pretty sure you can kill me if you want to. Yep, 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 yep. Oh! Oh, never mind. <laughs> I was like, okay, I might survive this. But hey, evenly matched, totally uh, got got me out on the first one. So I might just, you know, that might be the first change. Take out a uh, magical dimensional mirror or whatever the hell, because it's, it's okay. I haven't used it once. And I'm not getting rid of Nib. Like, I feel like that'd be foolish. Like, this guy just, you know, and so many other people special summon so many times during, uh, turns. Like, it'd be doing myself a disservice. Like, honestly. So yeah, that's probably gonna be the move. There I go. I'll, um, I'll end the video off. Um, actually, I want to show you guys the match history. Was this them? No, they scooped. It was... I believe this guy. This one was fun too, but it didn't have as much um, combos that I pulled off, I think. This one it was like, full of combos, so I guess we'll end the video off uh, going over this video and maybe the other one we'll see we'll see so i ended up going first i believe i activate the rota yep search the one of and i set the spy just because i i telegraphed exactly what i had and i'm just trying to fool them as much as i can oh this is numerion numerion number Numerian Network fucking player. Oh my god. I was so happy to have had Spy. Because Spy and the Nobleman, Nobleman, into another Spy? That sounds like what I would do. Yep, into another Spy. Love to see it. And then my Spy into Headman. I misplayed there. Should have done recruiter, and then um, got to head him into my hand. Appaloosa, no big deal. I literally have the ultimate slayer in my hand, so ready to use it. That's gotta feel awful, man. I was really happy my opponent didn't scoop. They're probably trying to. They're probably learning how to play that deck. Also, they, they had a couple of answers, so I'm thinking that they weren't ready to go down just like that. Like I said, it's casual, you know? We're kind of just in this. I seized my opportunity, bro. I was like, there's no way I'm letting you keep that. If that makes it another turn, that could change the entire game so much. You want to cut that off as soon as possible. That's why I love SP Little Knight. It is such a good tool. I feel like it's the better Nightmare Unicorn, which is probably why I haven't gone into Unicorn that much. 
Um, Chief, like I said, is a pretty decent card as situational. I think one or two would be really good. Two would be okay, but you'd have to make sure that you have enough material on the field, which is why extenders are really awesome to play, or anything that can special summon um, from your hand or whatever is really great. Because he can do a lot. He can set you up really well. Uh, let's see what I do. I do Spy and a Headman, Headman into Spiritualist, and then I make Chaos Angel. Oh, I forgot about this. To just banish the back row just to be safe. I think I have enough to kill them here, so I end it really quickly because it's casual. If I have enough to kill you, I'm not going to summon my entire arsenal on you. I'm going to be respectful and just, you know, we're here to experiment with the decks and tweak it and practice, so. I'm pretty sure they just wanted to get on to the next one the moment they realized they lost the game. It it happens. It really does. I forgot what this one was, but we're just going to check it out real fast. Because I think I remember this being a good match. I don't remember this hand at all. Branded player, okay. This is gonna take a minute, uh, if I remember correctly. You think they end on two XZ's monsters and one Therion monster? Either way, I am so happy to see that Ultimate Slayer every freaking time, dude. This is when I was playing Judge, and this is also when I was playing a 45, uh, 40, 43? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A, uh, 42, no, 43 ver card version of the deck. I think this is when it was at its best. Right now, it's kind of okay. I really do like having all the extenders and stuff. So, uh, I'll just pause um, real fast. So, I'm doing a little bit of chess here. I'm trying to break down all their negates, all the important ones anyways, so that way I can just, um, you know, play on the back foot and counter them and surprise them and restrict them as much as I can. Because you're a control player, but you can trick them so hard. You control them so freaking good, dude. Like, they just destroyed the one card that I wanted them to destroy. Because I have a spin waiting for them. I have something to unsummon whatever they summon. It is not a big deal. I am chilling. As long as they have no back row hate, it's cool. Which I was, you know, shitting bricks for a second, but like, statistically, I was thinking, now nah, there's no way. So, Judgment that. Love to see it. I really should add Judgment back to this. I played it at 2. You can play it at 3. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty damn good. Uh, let's see. I think I just get into another Necro Valley, and. I think. I try and get all the Necro Valleys from my... <laughs> this is what I was talking about earlier. This is why I love Steel, and I love Two Commanded. It's literally so free, man. Yep, love to see it. So the reason why I popped that... Um, oh, I guess <laughs> there is no point in explaining. It was just the only thing available. Also, it was the best time to do that before he tried to do anything funny and maybe go into Zeus or use a uh, spicy tech XZ's card uh, support, like a spell card or something. Like, this lets you climb into another XZ's monster, it climbs into another XZ's monster, it climbs into another XZ's monster, and then they have fucking Raid Raptor or a uh, Bungo, and I'm just like, Oh great, what do I do now? <laughs> Speaking of an annoying Xyz monster, <laughs> my sword's revealing light has arrived. 
I didn't want to get Lava Golem. I was like, this would be the one thing that Fulio to get off on me, and I'd be screwed. So, I was trying to be big brain, and just do the best that I can, stall out here, get my feet back, and just keep drawing out. That's really... Because this was when it was at 43, which is why I felt kind of confident to push it to 50, because I have so many tools that let me stall out. Um, once again, I, I really should add back the two judgment. If I get rid of um, those two, I think it was the extenders I was talking about, the wind ones, um, that I wasn't really seeing for the judge, I think that'd be a really good trade, actually. All I'm giving up is two extenders for literally something that unsummons the shit that they're trying to do. Like, that's huge. So that's probably the best way instead of uh, the evenly match. Evenly match is great, um, but I have to go through the battle phase. So that's trading a lot. Anyways, I stall. I get the royal tribute, bro. This is such a... This is so dirty. This is so dirty. I played royal tribute at 2, uh, I think. Yeah, at 2. Um... And it is so nasty. Royal Tribute, if you guys don't know, if you control Necrorelli, both players discard any monsters in their hands. Dark Honest is great. Like I said, it's perfect for this deck, uh, specifically because of Royal Tribute. Uh, if you have already special summoned the cards that you need, uh, just go ahead and use your normal summon, and boom, use Royal Tribute. Get rid of all their hand, basically. You know, boom, any monster. It's great to use this before you use Throne, because if they have Ash Blossom in their hand or any of that, uh, you sh shut that shit down right away. Very disappointing for them. Um, you use this going first. <laughs> it literally, I've seen so many people scoop from it. It's an auto win, dude. Get rid of all their hand, bro. It's so funny. And then they get nothing. They just have to draw. Like, their one card to start their turn and try and play back on. Most of the time, they're going to scoop. They're not going to do anything. Alright, let's see what happens here. The entire hand. I actually forgot specifically within their entire hand went away. That is so funny. I love that. I um was eyeing their defense when they summoned this thing, and I was like, oh, that's going to be cakewalk. I'm so glad I did Bagoo this way. Um, I don't think that they were thinking it all the way through when they let that happen, but they did. They let that happen, and they scooped it up there, so I can see why I wanted you guys to see this. That was a lot of fun, a lot of back and forth, and it shows you what this deck does on its defensive. Um, not this deck specifically, actually. This is a modified uh, 40, 43 card version. I think I did that math right. It was 43, I think. But uh, pretty solid deck. Gravekeepers are a lot of fun. And play your pet decks, guys. You don't always have to play meta. You can really do a lot by splicing in anti-meta into your pet decks. And I think it'd be a lot... you get Master Duel specifically would be a lot more fun if we weren't all seeing the same 5-6 decks rotating to the top and getting higher into the top and that's all you see. Like, I'm at a good place right now. I really like playing and I forgot which it is. It's like the blue one, the white one. Uh, I can actually just go and see what it's called now. Platinum. God, yeah, I like playing in Platinum, playing in Diamond, I only got to Diamond 4 once my entire career, and it was just because Trickstar Burn was really hitting it off, there was nothing they could do, it was perfect for me at the time, I think that was literally like 5-6 months ago, I don't remember what the meta was then, doesn't really matter, uh, because this is kind of like, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. Because you see some variety still, but you still get the competitiveness of people using meta cards. Uh, and sometimes a lot of meta archetypes and meta decks. Like you really do see a lot of Rescue Ace, a lot of 
Snake Eyes, a lot of Horus, a lot of Kai, uh, Kashtira, and Lab. You see a ton of Labyrinth. Oh my god. But, you know, uh, it's still fun to play the game if you have something that can <laughs> kind of shut them out. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So just explore your pet decks, man. Just give them a try. Look at all this, this stuff that you have. Do you have 12,000 cards at your disposal? Something like that. And the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! to pull from. You can do a lot of combos. Like, just... All I did for my, uh, my deck was I typed in Spellcaster. I looked up cards that help dark cards. I looked up cards that, uh, um, help me extend, like, special summon, search, as much as I can. Because, you know, it's just basic good deck building. <laughs> and then from there, you just try and see what you can negate or your, uh, board breakers, and then just keep adding in from there that makes the most sense. Find your win condition. My win condition is basically Necro Valley, Supernaturalist, um, Hidden Temples. Usually if I have those three things going, there's nothing else that's gonna, gonna interrupt me. You know, it might take a turn or two, maybe three, to kill them, depending on what I got. Like, but usually I hang in there, and usually I can get the job done. It's pretty fun. It's so freaking fun. But, uh, yeah. This deck is great. A lot of fun. Play your pet decks. They deserve it. They, they have a special place in your heart. And you gotta carry them, bro. Do it. Thanks for watching. Um, if you wanna see me make more stuff, let me know. Um... Not really looking for recommendations for decks to play until like we get some more cards coming out. But so far, I'm pretty content with the decks that I have. Um, I have Trickstar, I have Mech Knight, and I have Gravekeeper that I play pretty often. Um, I have a lot of other decks that I kind of fuck around with randomly, like I have Frogs, Rain Cess, um, Buster Blader, um, I have Light Scorn slash Ishizu which is pretty fucking fun because it's just random. I have Gravekeeper, or excuse me, I have a Graveyard uh, Pile deck. Um, a lot of fun. And... Zombies. I love playing zombies so much. I just kind of went nuts, and I was like, let me just see if I can get every extra deck and summoning mechanic in this. So I, I made one that has Rituals, Pendulums, Links, Fusion... Uh, Synchro and x -Eans. Uh, just because I just wanted to challenge myself a little bit. It was just whatever. So yeah, I have a lot of, uh, stuff I can showcase for you guys. Um, I also have a Joey deck and a Yugi deck. It's kind of just got a mix of their anime cards into one beefy pile of cards. So, a lot of fun. Um, play your pet decks. They, they deserve it. Alright, peace. Thanks for watching.